Today we're going to talk about crustal deformation, stress strain, folds, and faults. I'm going to start with talking about stresses. And so this is from chapter 9 of the opengeology.org slash textbook. Stress is the force that deforms a rock in terms of when we talk about any deformation, be it faults or folds, stress is the, the force that is causing that fold or fault. And if the stress is greater than the strength of the rock, then the rock will deform, be it folding or fracturing or faulting. And there's a few different types of stress. We're going to focus on confining and differential stress. Confining stress is equal in all directions, and differential stress is applied unequally, where there's a stronger direction of stress than in the other directions. And then strain, which is different than stress, is the result of that stress. So that could be your fold. Uh, a fold represents strain, or a fault represents strain. Here's the three types of stresses that we're going to talk about when we talk about faults. Compressional stress squeezes a rock and makes it shorter. So that's when you're like pushing something together. Tensional stress is when you're pulling something apart. It causes it to get thinner and longer. And then shear stress is when you're tearing something and it's slipping between two directions. So there's our compressional stress and our tensional stress and our shear stress. And there's another representation of the three, just to kind of hit home the point. What do you think caused the deformation seen in this trilobite? Well, it was most likely sheared and twisted here. I'll show you with some arrows. So this, this way and this way likely caused this to look a little bit slanted like that. <clears throat> okay. Oh, there we go. In response to stress, there's three different ways a material can respond. It could, it could deform elastically, ductily, or brittily. Elastic deformation is where, like a rubber band, where you stretch it and it returns to its original size and shape. And believe it or not, rock has the ability to elastically deform. It can, it can um, expand and contract back to its original shape. And as long as you don't push it back a certain, past a certain point, it will return to that shape. Ductile deformation, on the other hand, um, is when you bend something or, or strain the rock to the point where it does not return to its original shape, but you're not fracturing it. And a good example of something that displays ductile deformation is a paper clip. And then finally, brittle deformation is when the, um, the rock fails brittly and it's, it gets broken like a fault, like in a fault. And so an example of this would be breaking a glass on the floor. It would be brittily deforming. So what kind of deformation do you think we have here? This is an example of uh, ductile deformation. Okay, uh, some other uh, examples out there of deformation are joints that you see in rocks, They're the cracks. Those result from being stretched or pulled and or pulled apart and faults, um, where you have movement or displacement between the rocks, those can be created by brittle deformation. And then ductile deformation is when you see bends or folds, and they usually require higher temperatures and higher pressures to form than brittle deformations. To get a rock to kind of bend and fold without breaking, you need to submit it to a decent amount of temperature. Just like uh, steel, or metal whenever you want to bend metal without it fracturing. If you if you are working with cold metal, you could potentially cause it to shatter or, or break or tear. So here are the different um, 
different things that dictate whether something will deform brittly or ductily. There's temperature, pressure, rock type, and time. Hotter temperature means more ductile deformation, more kind of confining pressure, and this is this is a complicated one, will result in stronger rocks. And then uh, your rock type will really help dictate what type of deformation you're going to see. Um, more brittle, there's more brittle rocks out there like crystalline rocks, like granite or something along those lines versus a more ductile sedimentary rock like shale, which, which will deform much more easily. Clay, of course, is a very ductile type of sediment. And um, there's also zones of weakness, cleavage planes, rock cleavage planes, where the rock could break upon that will dictate whether it will deform brittly or ductily. If, if you have a weak zone, it's more likely that that's going to fail brittily. And finally, time. Sometimes if you exert stress on something over a long period of time, it's more likely to deform ductily. Just think of a sagging fence or a sagging bench that has been un undergoing deformation over a long period of time. And finally, um, here's a chart kind of showing how things undergo these different types of deformation. You start with uh, your elastic deformation, which can be returned, and that's this dotted line here. And then in some cases, like um, the C material here, it can undergo quite a bit of your ductal deformation until finally it fails brittily at the X. With B, you only get elastic deformation before your brittle failure. And A is, A is similar to C in that it has some of that ductal deformation first, but uh, like the others, it ends in that brittle failure at a certain point under a certain amount of stress and so that's it for stress and strain tune in for more about faults and folds uh, in this lecture series and i hope you learn something new